Hey guys, welcome to. No, okay guys, today I'm gonna to talk about. Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about neuroplasticity and um, and Rosenzweig experiment in 1972. So neuroplasticity is the ability of the brain to change itself as a result of new environments. Um, Rosenzweig wanted to test this in rats to see how their brains changed when they were put in different types of cages. So the three conditions. Um, there was one cage that was kept as a control, uh, the standard cage, so that's, you know, um, normal amount of rats in the colony, adequate food and water. Um, but then there was also an impoverished cage, so one rat isolated, no food, well, food and water, but no entertainment. And then there was the enriched environment, uh, which included eight rats, toys, adequate food and water, um, plenty of light, etc. So it was a highly stimulating environment. Periods of time varied from four to ten weeks, and after this time, rats were humanely sacrificed to, um, for autopsies to look at their brains. Results show that enriched rats had heavier and thicker cerebral cortexes. This is the part of the brain that responds to experience and is responsible for movement, memory, and learning. The enriched environment produced larger neurons and synapses, um, up to 50% um, larger. Greater activity of the nervous system enzyme acetylcholinesterase was also um, witnessed. In conclusion, the enriched rats' cerebral cortex increases and the chemical activity increases. This shows that um, a highly stimulating environment has, um, has a positive effect on the rats' learning. To evaluate this, uh, we can say that it is a well-controlled and reliable experiment and easy to be repeated since it was done in a lab. Um, this is also supported by Luby's study on children and poverty. The weaknesses might include changes due to handling rather than the actual enriched environment. Also, this enriched environment was closely compared to the control group. However, the impoverished group was not. So perhaps it wasn't examined thoroughly enough, um, especially the roles of stress and isolation. So when a person develops a greater number of skills and abilities, the brain from this experiment is seem to become more complex, heavier, and that's because we'll have learnt more. But for the critical thinking behind this experiment, um, what is the value of using mice? Well, it's more acceptable to sacrifice mice than humans, and we're able to control their environments more. But also, unlike humans, rats can't think about what the experimenters and the researchers are trying to find. They just get on with their daily life. However, humans would always, you know, there would be demand characteristics getting in the way. Um, they would always be trying to find out what exactly the researchers are trying to, trying to conclude, and that would bias the experiment. The end. Uh, that's our experiment. Any questions? <laughs>